Hello, and thank you so much for being here with me today. I have three very special guests. I have uh, my very good friend, artist, Kristen. I'll let her introduce herself and our lovely model. And Ms. Ashley, I will let you all tell a little bit more details about it is that you do. So my name is Kristen, and I am a professional face and body painter. Um, I do birthday parties, special events, full body paintings, all that fun stuff. And I'm Ashley Carter Youngblood. I'm a clinical social worker and marriage and family therapist in the Kalamazoo area who provides individual therapy, couples counseling, family therapy, and life coaching. And with that being said, your art is a form of therapy, correct? Yes. Okay, can yes. we talk about that? Yes. Um, right now, I'm actually um, working uh, for a piece for Art Price, okay. and it's healing through body art. And what I'm doing is I'm taking models who've been through different traumas and tragedies and I'm painting their story. So we've talked about their story and different mechanisms they've used to help heal through the situation and whatnot. And we're going from there. And how does that kind of work with the therapy that you provide? Sure, it's an interesting mix. So we knew each other a bit before and she had approached me and said, you know, and I, and I love that about you, that you know, I'm, we're, we're talking about how can we help people recover from trauma, how can we let people know that they have a voice and that their story matters, but how do I do it the right way? How do I do it in a really trauma-sensitive way? Which is really awesome that she initiated contacting me and saying, help me to know how to best do that. So we talked a little about how to support people who have gone through trauma and how to deal with triggers when they come and how to be sensitive about that. So. You know, she's of course the artist, but I'm there more for therapeutic support and provided her with some um, statistics and data on the specific issues or the specific um, traumas that people are recovering from and really how to deal with those and help people tell yeah. their story in and an she, appropriate way. Yeah, and she's been an excellent help throughout it too, just making sure that I handle the whole, because it is a sensitive process, and just making sure that it's handled correctly. And like, how does it, what does that look like? You know, how does a person come in and like become um, our beautiful owl that we have sitting <laughs> here today? Like, how does that story, you know, how do you go from point A to point Z? Well, I, it's been, it's been a lot of work because I, I am being very interactive with the models beforehand. So when I get their story, uh, we talk about different things that they want painted on them as well. So uh, Art Price, I'll be at the Bob painting there and they'll start with pasties and thongs so they won't be full nude. Okay. Um, and I start by tracing out the outline of the design and then filling it and, and I use different tools like sponges and brushes and I also use airbrush as well, so. And so I guess um, I'm kind of wondering when a person has a trauma, like what type of trauma and then how would you create a, a visual of what the inner emotion is? And it's been different with each person because they've all gone through different things. I have a model who went through anorexia. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked about her experience with that and how she went, got through it uh, and how she She's kind of like a flower child. She's amazing. And so with her design, um, she wanted a skeleton that was kind of flourishing. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a skeleton with like flowers coming out of it. And then she's also on the back, we're going to do like a portrait of a stump with a sprouting seed coming out of it to show new growth. And does so. it take multiple times or is it just one time to create that image? It's, it's just going to be a, a body paint usually takes um, four to six hours for something simple it can take longer than that um, and so it will take about that time we'll probably spend about eight hours on each design mm -hmm. so that's besides meeting beforehand that's about as long as we'll be back and forth painting and whatnot so and they have to stand up sit down <laughs> play the whole whole game with that <laughs> what I think is really awesome about what Kristen does in addition to obviously being an amazing artist is that she has made these stories 
you know, expression of her art, but she's collaborating with each of these models and asking them, what do you want? What is the vision that you have? And so really, I mean, it's been a wonderful joint effort to be able to watch and how, you know, some of the symbolism is just really powerful, like the sprouting seed. And, and to have her collaborate about that, it seems like it, it has helped people actually discover what their story is right. and the symbolism of that. And that's the whole point of why we're collaborating on this, to help people be able to tell their story, because that's not not always comfortable to do. No, <laughs> no, and and that's the thing too. This whole project is talking about a whole bunch of things that makes people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's PTSD, anorexia, child molestation, um, rape. Uh, there's some transgender, transgender domestic violence. Domestic violence. Um, did you mention PTSD? I did. <laughs> addiction. addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So we're covering all, all those types of top, topics, and it's 18 days of painting, so 18 different models. Eight hours a day, she's doing that. Now, you have the kind of some statistics and stats for us that you can kind of enlighten us um, along the way. Could you fill us in on those, please? Sure, yeah, I brought a whole list. Of what what we did in, in our collaboration when she first approached me is we thought that it could be not only a wonderful opportunity for these people to therapeutically tell their story and heal through something like art, which is why this can be so therapeutic, but we wanted also to take that as an opportunity to let people know how common some mm -hmm. of these things are. And um, so, so I, I have some of those, but I know that she already has displays and some really beautiful banners that will be at the event and the installation itself that will talk about some of the rates of statistics for people who have experienced trauma and tragedy. Um, so just to mention a few, would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. So for example, domestic violence, one in three women and one in four men experience some sort of intimate partner violence or stalking in their lifetime. Uh, about one in five girls, one in 20 boys is a victim of child sexual abuse, PTSD, about six out of every 10 men or five out of every 10 women experience one trauma in their life. It is about seven to eight percent of the population that will have PTSD in their lifetime, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. Anxiety, I don't know if you had that yeah, on the banner. Yeah, they have anxiety on the banner, yeah. <clears throat> um, it's the most common mental Ill illness in the United States. Mm -hmm. Women are 60% more likely than men to experience an anxiety disorder in their lifetime. Um, bipolar disorder is oh, also yeah. one that we yeah. were talking about Covering too. Bipolar. Um, treatment is essential for managing that diagnosis because it, it can be really intense and it's actually about 83% of all cases that are considered severe for bipolar disorder, but unfortunately only 55.5% of people are receiving treatment. Mm -hmm. Addiction, for example, in 2013, an estimated 22.7 million Americans, or about 8.6%, needed treatment for a problem related to substance abuse, but only about 2.5 million, or 0.9%, received treatment at a facility that specialized in addiction. Eating disorders has the highest mortality rate of any mm -hmm. mental illness. Mm -hmm. And every 62 minutes, at least one person dies as a direct result from an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Right, with and it really is. And what I found too is a lot of my models have more than one story. A lot of oh, it, okay. maybe something happened and it's led to other things. Yep. So it's, it's amazing how many people have a story. It's just something mm -hmm. we don't talk about. And then I, I, finding a body paint model is challenging as it is. So finding a body painting model that it went through a trauma I thought was gonna be a lot harder and more difficult, but it was surprisingly, I hate to say, easier than I thought. <laughs> because there's just people, there's just so much that people are experiencing that they're not sharing with everyone else. So mm -hmm. what kind of got you started um, with it being body paint and face a painting? Like what got you there? So um, I'm currently a single mom, but I was married at one point and we were in a financial position and I was like, well, what do I have? And I had a face painting kit 
And so I was like, oh, we'll see what happens. And I got it out and I, I didn't even know that I could paint. I was oh. mostly did music throughout <laughs> high school. So I didn't take, Surprise. so I didn't, I didn't take like any art classes or anything that throughout high school or anything like that. So it wasn't something that I was really in tuned with. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I just, I pulled up some YouTube videos and started learning and just, flying with it. It ended up being a lot bigger. I was like, let's see if I can get a birthday party or two. And now I'm the official fa face painter for the K-Wings and the Growlers. So I do their their games and then I do corporate picnics and birthday parties and other special events too. With the artist that we have, I'm sorry, the model that we have today, can you kind of tell us and talk us through our beautiful owl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So Rachel has um, an owl and you'll see that there's a lot of texture. Um, what we started, we started with a base, uh, with water-based paint and then to get a lot of the texture, like she has some lace going throughout her legs and then there's some teardrops throughout there. Um, we uh, used airbrush to stencil that on as well. So this took, this was probably one of the quickest body paints that I've ever done. It only took three hours. We, we hustled through that three hours. <laughs> um, but she also has on undies and, and pasties as, as well. So, and the coverage is always to the model's comfort. Oh, okay. So, so talk about that, like kind of the coverage. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Because yeah. I've never been painted before. No, so. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, I, I do do some fully nude ones. So I, I have done fully nude body paints as well. Um, then I've had models that would just like um, undergarments down there. So I've done that as well. And then I've done full bras and pasties. So like I said, it's, it's to the model's comfort level in their comfort zone. How was it for your comfort zone as well? I, you know what, it was, at first it felt a little bit taboo. Okay. You know, okay. it was like, oh, this is my, this my, my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's just, it's getting the end product. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what it's about. And so it doesn't, it takes the sexuality out of it quite a bit, so. And what do you do with the end product? Are you um, doing a photo shoot with them? Like, kind of, what's the once you're painted? It's like, okay, do you go home and get a burger? Or like, <laughs> go take, take a walk downtown. Um, okay. A lot of them are for photo shoots. Okay. I have had my uh, work actually. Rachel was one of my models, and we got into last year's October issue of Skin Marks magazine, which is a big. Um, body paint magazine. I have also do beauty makeup as well that I've had in magazines. So so a lot of it is more geared towards more commercial-like work when I do the body paint. What would be your ideal candidate? Who, who would you want to come if someone, who would you say, hey, come see me and this is why, this is what I can do for you or what we can do for you? This whole project is about giving everyone a voice. Um, so just anyone that can relate to those type of experience just to support the models even because mm -hmm. a lot of them they've never been body painted before so it is very it's putting themselves in a very vulnerable position mm -hmm. especially the topic yeah, and physically then and emotionally. yes physically and emotionally it's putting them in a very vulnerable position so just to support them and show them that their story is amazing that they're amazing that that's who I'd love to see. And then and that they matter, too. Right. I mean, not only showing up, but being able to vote for the ability to have people display publicly, emotionally, and physically their trauma and, and know that recovery is possible and helping other people mm -hmm. know recovery is possible, too. And what's great is Ashley has volunteered to come out a couple of days, mm -hmm. and if anyone has questions for her, what were the dates that you'll be out there? It's Saturday, September 30th. And Sunday, October 1st, I'll be there to be a therapeutic support. It's towards the end of the time of our prize, so that way if, if people are triggered by what they're seeing or mm -hmm. if it emotionally has kind of stirred up them being able to talk, mm -hmm. I'm not doing therapy because ethically I wouldn't be able to do that in a public setting, but I will be there just to support people and let them know what resources are out there. So not mm -hmm. only are there statistics, 
but she also has displayed several community resources or crisis hotlines or other resources that are available so that if people have experienced, and you're absolutely right, it's a vast majority of people who have experienced some sort of trauma or tragedy in their life. And unfortunately, what we know about research in trauma is that trauma usually breeds trauma. Mm -hmm. So very rarely is, is someone going to experience just one trauma. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to be there and help support them and help give them resources, I'll be there to be able to do that. And, and you know, I don't know really what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to be there yeah. and, and watch see what unfold. Happens. And they may not need <laughs> me at all, which is okay. I'll just be able to enjoy the art. So. Right. And what's really great, too, is that I have gotten down everyone. Everyone has written up their own little story. Mm -hmm. And I do have um, a setup where I'm going to have a whole bunch of small banners it's on four different sides, and it's going to tell the model's story. So even if I'm not there painting or they want to see the stories of all the models that that are participating they can so so talk a little bit more about the competition for those who may not know and that they can go and they can vote right for, <laughs> <laughs> for you um and kind of what that will do for you and what that will mean okay so art prize is one of the largest art competitions in the I believe almost world, I think, either in the United States or world. I it is nationally. one of the, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, they have right now almost 200 venues where they're hosting several dis different artists. So it's a great time to take your family down and experience all type of different art. They have, um, there's different categories. There's 2D art, 3D art, installation art, and then my category, which is time-based. Mm. So, and they have, what's great is they've got awards for each category, and then they also have a public vote, and okay. then the judges vote. So those are the big, the big grand ones, and of course everybody wants those. <laughs> so, um, but my vote code is um, 66289, and then you can go to artprize.org and, and vote that way. So again, that's 66289. And then, oh, go ahead. And she'll also have a link on her website where yes. if you go to her website, she can, um, you can vote. And I will also post that on my website and also on my Facebook page as well. Too. Yeah. So you'll be able to get that information there. Yeah. So tell me more. Talk more to me about this whole, you know, everything with this. Well, it's definitely something that consu has consumed my life, but in the best way possible. <laughs> She's very, very busy. She's working incredibly hard. Yes, um, I I started working from home in May. Okay. Um, if I wasn't working from home, I wouldn't be able to do this project because it has consumed my life to that. But working with all the different models, and like I said, there's been tons of follow-up and creating the installation for it. Um, like, uh, um, like Ashley was saying, there's um, a statistic banner. So we made banners and then we made um, three life-size cutouts of art that I've done in the past and then there's going to be the other banners. So even just doing the installation part of the project was a project in its own and I haven't even done the art part. <laughs> and that's what I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of work. 18 days, September 20th through October 8th. Uh, so I'm, I can't wait to start painting because that's that's going to be the fun part. And I'm trying to remember when you approached me. I want to say that was maybe July. Some, I mean, it's been very rapid fire the entire mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And she had even been kind of developing her vision of what she wanted the, the project to look like. And so we collaborated, and it seemed to maybe enhance that a little more, even with the title, right? right? Yeah. She had come <laughs> up with, with what she wanted that title to be. And so she's been working extremely hard in a very short period of time and all that. I mean, you don't see all the work that goes into something like that with the banners, with the printing, with the gathering statistics, figuring out which ones you want to use, who's going to be the model, interviewing them. What's their design going to be? Exactly, compiling <laughs> what their story is and what are they going to want painted. And it's a ton of behind the scenes work. Mm -hmm. I have a question for the model. Um, how does it feel to be painted? Like, what's the experience like for you to go through this process? Um, it's honestly very eye-opening. Um, it's nothing like I've ever experienced before. Like, I've, um, I can't describe it, but I just have to say that Kristen makes it a wonderful experience. She's so outgoing, 
and she really makes you feel comfortable. Like a lot of people ask me and they're like, oh, isn't that like really scary? Like, and definitely not. With her, she makes you feel extremely comfortable and safe and really helps you just open up and, you know, flourish and just kind of run with it, you know, so. With, your, with getting paint today, Kind of tell me what you felt like going through that because you're painting from head to toe, front <laughs> and back. <laughs> She's got a little bit of paint on her. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell me kind of like you know the, the 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 feeling of the paint, being able to move inside of it because it's almost like you're fully dressed. Yeah. Uh, you look like you have. It, it on. feels that way. It Do feels you? that way too. Um, it really feels like I have like an entire outfit on, like. Uh, I mean, not like Girl, literally, your shoes. but like. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, um, I mean, you wouldn't, it's not like itchy or anything. It doesn't really tickle. It um, honestly feels really good okay. on the skin. Okay. <laughs> it feels really good on the skin. It's um, very smooth. Um, it doesn't smear too easy yeah, either. Like you I can, can kind of go over it and not yeah. have it just come off either. So. It's so very which brings me to my next high question. quality paint. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, it's all professional face and body paint. So how do you take it off? How do you get undressed? <laughs> in the With a shower, lot, I assume, right? a lot of work. Um, I mean, just soap and water. I mean, we'll get it off a little bit of scrubbing, but I mean, it's not as hard as you would think. Okay. Or as hard as it looks. I mean, it's um, what is it? Uh, um. Alcohol yes. and water-based, um, yep. right? The the hand stuff I hand painted was just water-based. Uh, the stuff I airbrushed so is a hybrid of an alcohol and water-based, so it stays on a little bit better. So that helps out a lot with that as well. So. Yeah. Cause I know after Halloween you try to like wash your child or after you know, like <laughs> and your baby still kind of yeah. <laughs> wash your child's face. I just was wondering, are you kind of still a little blue and a little green for Not a day with or this two? Quality paint, no. Oh, okay. It's very, it's meant for this. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so it's. My, my biggest Sorry. advice for everyone who has taken their child to a festival in order to get paint off, <laughs> <laughs> to avoid the least amount of staining, it's just, you get it just a little bit wet, some, some water on there, and then you take the soap and rub it in, and rub the soap in. If you just try to wash it off with just water, then you're gonna get staining, but if you rub that soap in, you're, you go. you're good to go. We're all that, that in a washcloth and you're good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Because, because I mean, because that's what happens the next day. The poor little babies just still uh, look like, oh, yeah. You're still, are, you're still blue, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the colors that stain the worst too. Are blue and green. So, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now one work. of the pictures that I saw, it looked like a tattoo. Yeah, that's actually airbrush tattoo. So I do do airbrush as well. So I do parties for just doing airbrush to tattoos. What's great is I've got um, a whole line of stencils that make them look real. So it's a mixture between doing some stencil work and doing some freehand. Okay. So, but they look really neat. They, they look did. like real tattoos. I've had a friend who was going to visit mom have me do a sleeve on her arm. <laughs> that is mom was not impressed. <laughs> and how long do those come take And with those, I usually do an alcohol-based paint and those, um, they, you remove those with like, uh, um, with either like baby oil. Is that that's what I'm trying to say? Baby oil or um, or a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Or if you have a makeup remover, that that works best for that. But those mm -hmm. can last three to five days. Okay. So so they can stay on you a little longer. That's a little fun. Cause yeah. it's like a, not quite a commitment. Right, you right. Know, so like, it's oh, temporary. It's there for a couple days, yeah, honey, but it's not. Your name <laughs> so for yeah, what's, days. what's fun is you can try something out before you go get something done. Mm -hmm. So definitely, yeah. I, I 
concept. Mm-hmm. Try it before you buy it. I think yeah. you want a full sleeve. <laughs> right, you think. Is it harder to, or have you painted someone with um, more melanin, more darker complected skin versus Oh my a, gosh, they look so beautiful. The, the, the dar- darker skin tones just make the paint pop. Okay. So beautiful. <laughs> see, I would wonder if it would do the opposite, because in tattoos, if you have darker skin, mm-hmm. the tattoo, mm-hmm. the color eats, it melts inside the skin yeah. versus... As opposed um, to just laying in there um i mean there's some certain colors that that blend that you have to use a little heavier but it just it just makes all the paint pop and looks gorgeous so tell me what your goals are with everything once wow. we're you know once we're once fit, we're done with our prize yeah, <laughs> is there, win, is, right yes Absolutely. we, we want to win vote, vote, vote for me <laughs> we're, we're gonna vote for you everybody's gonna vote for you <laughs> is there life after art prize <laughs> um, <laughs> We'll find out. Well, I, I'm, I'm doing another season with the K-Wings, so I'll be there for all their Sunday games. So I'm looking forward to that. I've got a couple things um, booked with Western as well. So it's just going to be doing the same thing. I'm planning right now actually an online course uh, for people who want to learn how to paint. So I'm in the process of making that. So that will eventually be up on my KFX Body Art where you can subscribe and get tutorials on it will be uh, face painting advice, business advice, so everything that it takes to do what I do. And with you, uh, Ashley, can you kind of tell a little bit more kind of what your goals are with this as well? Because I know you also have a therapy dog. Um, and do. so do you bring the dog as well to the, with the therapy kind of as someone's opening up, do you get a lot of emotions uh, where people are kind of opening up doors that they have locked and shut? Yeah, you know, that's part of the reason why I plan on being there for two days because we really have no idea what to expect. I mean, it's one thing to do this professionally or to model repeatedly for Mm -hmm. someone, but it's a whole other thing for someone to be in a vulnerable place emotionally and then physically. So, and so yeah. public. And, and so <laughs> incredibly yeah. public. Right. Absolutely. I mean, right. in the middle of the bob, what, what more public place could you be in Grand Rapids? So the therapy dog won't be there because I need to give my attention to the people and the emotions that they're experiencing. If I'm needed at all, maybe I won't be. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I, I will be there providing support. So I, I specialize in my true passion is helping empower women to discover their voice and heal their relationships. So in the context of people finding their voice, through stories of recovery from trauma and tragedy. That for me is just a natural marrying of, of our goals, and which is why I found it so much fun to help people find you know, that, that innate wisdom, that innate voice within themselves and figure out a way to express that. Whether it's through art, whether it's through going to therapy, whether it's through talking to friends, whether it's through their own creative journey, but whatever that may bring, just letting people know that their voice matters and that people wanna hear it. But you're also a marriage counselor, uh, therapist, right? So, do have you done like couples kind of uh, collaborative uh, pictures of? I couples? have painted couples in the past. We haven't collaborated on something, but that maybe that's fun, something though, fun right? to do in the future. Yeah, the couple that I did paint looked like they were having a lot of fun. Okay. It was uh, they wanted something. They were newer. They were actually an older couple. Okay. I believe they were like close to their 60s, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. And so they wanted something for Valentine's Day so that they could have for themselves. And so I body painted both of them, and it, they just had a fun time. Mm-hmm. So That is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so there is not like an age limit because, like you said, that you mm-hmm. said it was an older couple. So it's not just something for, you know, young people to do right so that's right. very interesting that it can be for all ages right well and I think the other part of helping people find their voice for both of us is meeting them where they are okay. so mm-hmm. they may not want to just put pasties on and a thong and that's okay I mean it, it makes it easier and I'm certainly not the artist but, but we want people to know again that that their story matters however they want to present that mm-hmm. okay. so I think that's also part of too what, what we hope that the vision is as well mm-hmm. to let Absolutely. people know that their stories matter, we want to hear their voice, but that recovery is possible. And this may be an avenue for that. Right. We're hoping so. Yes, That they absolutely. look at this as, you know what, this is an opportunity, this is something that I can do as a start mm-hmm. towards my recovery. And they're not alone. I mean, we have at least 19 people, right, who are, who are wanting to share their stories. And the rates of trauma and tragedy, they're so incredibly high, unfortunately. But people are not alone, and there is help out there.
Right. But a lot of people don't know how to get that, and that's also why we've collaborated on, you know, not only is this someone's story, but what are some resources? Mm -hmm. And me being there a couple of days and having those crisis hotline numbers and the, the text crisis line number and various agencies locally, letting people know that the help is available. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with your background, you know, how did you start your walk? How did you get to this point where you are so supportive of women and helping people to find themselves and their voices? Yeah. Um, so I provide a holistic approach to the process of therapy. So my approach is that I partner with people on their journey. So I'm not the expert. Yeah, I have degrees on the wall and I have multiple licenses, but, but I want to help people find their own inner voice that's there so for example a lot of, you know someone may ask me a question like well what should i do mm, and so mm -hmm. well, what do you think you should do like what how would you make that decision and turning that around and allow people to actually answer their own questions that often we we forget that we actually have the answers to those and so that's helping people find their own voice and giving themselves permission a, a lot of times as women, we forget that it's okay to have a voice because we've been taught that we have to be really quiet and meek. And so to find our voice can in itself be really empowering part of the story. Is it different for the men in this process than you would say the women? I don't think so. Hmm. No. I don't, I don't, I haven't, I mean, I have two male models that I've been working with and it seems to be the same process and okay. it's still, and you know, some of them have kind of buried it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, going back to that situation. And I did, you know, I did have to talk to some of them before they wrote their story because it was difficult for some mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think a lot of the time we, I think a lot of time people don't want to be the, necessarily the victim. Mm -hmm. And and so they don't want to have that victim mentality, so they don't want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, once you've come from that. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of a catch-22, too, because, you know, as women, you know, we're told that we have to be, um, you know, made of sugar and spice and everything nice. Are and we so though? I know. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're yes, told. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is true. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're told to play nicely, and we're told to play house, and we're told to do all those things. And if we don't avoid shame on us, sometimes we're called a certain word when we're just trying to be ourselves and find our voice. But I think on the other side of that, though, you know, men aren't allowed to be seen as weak. Mm -hmm. They aren't allowed mm -hmm. to really be emotional, uh, emotional or be vulnerable. And so I, part of that, I think, is, is less about gender and more about we just need to practice giving people permission to experience their own emotions and have their own journey and use their own voice. And, you know, any gender, any ethnicity, any age, any religion, any cultural background, any whatever, there, there will always will be challenges because we're, we're not and we'll never will be a perfect society. But again, this is just about giving people, and I, I would probably argue, the practice to telling their stories. Mm -hmm. Because what we also know through research about trauma is that it actually really helps people to be able to tell their story. It can help people process through that and work through that, and sometimes that can even make it less emotional, less distressing less overwhelming so that over a period of time if they continue to tell their story it's almost like they desensitize themselves mm -hmm. to the intensity of the specifics and the details so there's multiple benefits for that as well did you want to add to that I just well honestly I think the whole project has even been healing for myself there's been things that's happened to me even in the past and so just to be able to recognize those things and say okay those things happen it's okay and it's okay to move on okay so it's well, and the difficulty of dealing with that intense content, right? We had that conversation of, oh my gosh, how do you do what you do every day? And it <laughs> yeah. can be really challenging to... It can be to, draining. Yeah, to, physically to draining to hear it all that. Emotionally, you do it. <laughs> you know, it, it's a process. But that, I, I think also, you know, and in my line of work, it's, it's all about my own self-care. If I'm not doing the things to care for myself that, that I'm teaching my clients to do, then I don't feel like I'm being a very effective therapist. Mm -hmm. So part of that is through this process, even when it's frustrating, how can we help practice caring for ourselves? How can we help these people recognize that, yes, this is difficult, and how do you care for yourself? So you feel uncomfortable while you're being body painted? Okay, take a break. Go for a walk. Do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Get some food. You know, Get up. Start moving around. And again, listening to that inner voice that's telling you, 
this is too overwhelming and, and working through that as well. I, and as you're saying it, I almost can imagine as you're, if someone is becoming their owl, <laughs> yeah, right. that is probably becoming emotional because you're starting to see your story on your outside. Like your inside yeah. emotion is now becoming your outside emotion mm -hmm. and you can see that, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that if this was your pain, it's not hidden. Your pain right. is front and center. So mm -hmm. I can see where you might say, you know what, I need a time out. That, that seed is starting to hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. And all my models, too, I've told them, you know, if you want to stop at any time, if you feel uncomfortable at any time, yep. it is about them. Mm -hmm. it's, it, at that point when we're there, it is about them. It's not about me. It's not about the artwork. It's about them. Mm -hmm. So if they feel uncomfortable or they just feel, okay, this was too much, maybe I shouldn't, then they're more than free to do whatever they please. Well, and it's not about re-traumatizing. So even right, in our right, work, right, you know, right. even if someone comes into me and says, you know, I have this trauma that I want to work through, awesome. We don't just like jump to the deep end, right? So we wait a little bit in the water. How do you feel about that? How did that impact your life? And when people feel like that's too much, we again practice listening to that inner voice. And so when people need to dial that back, that's okay. But we're not just gonna say, well, now you're completely on display. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, I think, we're gonna give them that. And I think that's kind of why it's been a process too. Mm -hmm. Some of these models I've met for the first time. So when I first meet with them, I'm not just like, hey, <laughs> tell me, tell me all the all the horrible things about you. But it has created some of the most real conversations I have ever had with people. Do you sit down with a person once, twice, three times? Kind of what's a normal normal session it's, before it goes from you know meeting with you before they're painted um if I'm doing like a typical one with outside of this project we might just meet once and have a conversation and see what their vision is but like I said this is is a little more sensitive and we're putting really a lot of emotion and feeling into the project okay. so it's not to overwhelm them with the emotion as well okay so and that's one of the things that we even initially talked about when she had approached me and I said it's important for people to know that they have an owl because part of trauma and tragedy, even if we think about very specific tragedy, is that people feel like they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. People are feeling victimized. I mean, if you're a survivor of sexual assault or sexual abuse, you don't want to do anything against your will. And it's not a good idea to force someone to do something against their will. And of course, that's just one example. Mm -hmm. But to, to let people know that there is some freedom, that they, they have, you know, they're, they're using their voice because they want to tell their story, not because we're forcing them to do that. So that's the, the atmosphere that we've also tried to create, and Kristen's done a really good job with that. Yeah, and it's been the relationships with the models, too, and building mm -hmm. those. So, you know, I've had some of them that just opened up with me in the first meeting, or we've mm -hmm. had to meet two or three times before we really actually talk about the story in itself. Maybe I know what's happened, but I don't know the story. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely dependent on the individual. But um, with most of them, I've met with them at least three to four times and then we messaged each other back and forth and we're talking about a whole bunch of models here. <laughs> My phone has been blown up. <laughs> I mean, I guess outside of the show and outside of the therapy, if a person is, you know, maybe experiencing motherhood, would they consider, would that be an option to become painted, you know, to tell the story to their child during pregnancy because you are so beautiful at that point in time um is that something that you're interested in opening up to or just someone who's saying you know what i might not have experienced trauma i may not be necessarily therapeutic but i think sure. that it's just so beautiful that i want to be a part and mm -hmm. i want to be able to have the experience absolutely I i've done an actually <laughs> <laughs> i've actually i've done quite a few prenatal um so i've do the belly paintings as well so that's a really fun one that's actually probably one of my funnest things to do because while I'm painting the baby's moving around oh, and it gosh. takes like so many different <laughs> shapes with with doing like you with someone being pregnant you want to keep them off your off their feet while you're doing it where with the with doing the body painting I can keep her on her feet so I might have that model stand up so I can sketch it out when she lays down the the image looks totally different because <laughs> the whole everything's shifting yeah. and then so it's it's definitely a whole different process doing that but those oh. those are my favorite <laughs> well we're gonna get ready to head out are there any last final tidbits or hellos and thank yous and I love you like before we finalize and we'll start with you Miss Model Miss Owl <laughs> um, just because you've been thank you so graciously yes, for you. allowing yourself to show off her lovely uh, 
gift and ability. I just want to say that I'm super excited to be working with Kristen um, in our prize. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Um, I think so much is going to come out of it. Um, a lot of healing, um, a lot of you know openness, rawness, but in the best ways possible. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I'm going to say vote for me. <laughs> Do you want to share your website again? And then yes. The vote code? Um, my website is www.kfxbodyart.com, and there's a button that you can click to go to the Art Prize site to vote, or you can go to artprize.org, and my vote code is 66289. And I just, I really want to take some time to thank all my models for going through this journey with me and being a part of it and and opening their lives to me because that's really what they've done and i think this is the part where i say thanks mom and dad <laughs> yeah because I, I i am a single mom and they're helping me tremendously with taking care of my eight-year-old during the whole process so mm -hmm. thank god so yes yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> gotta give a proper shout out <laughs> that's so true so I will also, like I said, be continuing to update my website and Facebook page. So you can go to my website, which will also have that information, at www.kalamazoo-counseling.com, which also links to my Facebook page, too, and I'll be doing some Facebook Live for oh, you. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a blast. Yes, and I'll be doing Facebook Lives on, on um, KFX Body Art on Facebook, so those will be up there. On, um, if you, They'll be public on my personal page as well, so under Kristen Adams. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, ladies, all for being on my thank show. You for and my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> you open a whole life. A whole well, come check us out. Yes, oh, definitely. Sure. Definitely got my vote. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> and thank you all so much for watching the show, and have a wonderful day. God bless. Thanks.